Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ. As we sit, depending on how your league operates, maybe three or four weeks away from the start of the playoffs. And that means that roster moves that you're making are notably important as you try to set up for the playoffs and mitigate any injury issues. Here are notable injuries to monitor in week 11. DK Metcalf off the injury report. He's going to start. But we do have problems in Jacksonville. Sam Laporta out for Detroit. They have receiver room problems in Buffalo. Dalton Kincaid, Keon Coleman, Amari Cooper. Uh, Cooper, the only one that's questionable. The other two are out as they get set to face the Chiefs this week. That game on CBS. All right, let's welcome in Heath Cummings from Fantasy Football today to help us navigate another week of injuries and roster adjustments. Let's start at the top here, Heath. DK Metcalf, wide receiver for the Seahawks, off the injury report. Set to face the 49ers. How are you feeling about DK as he gets set for this one? Hey, if DK Metcalf is playing for the Seattle Seahawks, DK Metcalf is playing for my fantasy football team. I think this one's more interesting as far as how it impacts Geno Smith, who is the most prolific, if not the most efficient, passer in the NFL this season. Seattle has been extremely pass heavy. I would expect that to remain the case in a game where they're probably chasing points against the San Francisco 49ers. I'm okay starting Geno Smith as well because DK Metcalf is back. The guy who's obviously hurt Jackson Smith and Jigba, his last game was incredible. We've seen him be incredible with when DK Metcalf has missed time. We've also seen that when DK Metcalf has played, Jackson Smith and Jigba has been like ev every target he He's received seems to be within five yards of the line of scrimmage. It's just it's screens, it's short slants. I think you look at JSN now as maybe a borderline number two in full PPR leagues and a number three in non PPR leagues. So start Metcalf, flex JSN, start Geno Smith, and probably forget about Tyler Lock. And you see the rankings for this week uh, as they head into this game against the 49ers, the consensus and the PPR league rankings. Uh, you see them there. Heath has uh, JSN a little underrated this week. But as mentioned, with DK Metcalf back, it kind of changes that situation for JSN. He says put him in the flex spot, but start DK Metcalf. All right, let's go over to the Jaguars. We know Trevor Lawrence is out. Running back Tank Bigsby also ruled out as they were taking on the Detroit Lions this week. So, Heath, when you look at this fantasy roster, it almost seems to me like Travis Etienne is basically the only guy maybe you're looking at. Tell us what you're thinking. Yeah, and, and that's even tough because we just don't know how many points this Jacksonville team is going to score. Listen, I think you look at the Cooper Rush game from last week, the Mac Jones game from last week, and you expect both of those guys to be better than they were last week because last week they were complete disasters. But still, I don't think Mac Jones is going to be good. I am terrified of starting Brian Thomas Jr., who really counts on more downfield targets. That's not something we've ever seen Jones be very good at. I am still standing by Evan Ingram as a low-end starting tight end. Again, we've seen Jones have success with tight ends in the past. Ingram works closer to the line of scrimmage where Jones is more comfortable. Jones has also been comfortable throwing to his running backs. That should be beneficial for ETN. View Travis ETN as a low-end number two running back. Evan Ingram is a low-end number one tight end. Try to stay away from the wide receivers if you can. Certainly if you have Evan Ingram and you happen to have Sam Laporta, that gives you a nice uh, choice in terms of who to play because we know that Sam Laporta is out with the shoulder injury. You would think Laporta would be the guy if he's starting, but he's not. He's not going to be playing this week, so Evan Ingram might be a guy to put in there. But would you take a flyer on Laporta's replacement, Brock Wright, given how this offense operates? You know, if it was last year, maybe. This year, we've really not seen the tight end role for the Lions be what it's been in the past. For most of the season, in fact, only twice all year have we seen Laporta with more than five targets in a game. He's made some plays downfield, but I don't really think Brock Wright's going to do that. I'd view Brock Wright as pretty much a touchdown-dependent guy, and so I'd be more interesting and in, interested in streaming someone like a, a Will Disley, who's been pretty involved for the Chargers in terms of target share. Um, I think this does hurt Jared Goff just a little bit, bit but again, not too much because Dis because Laporta hasn't had a huge role in the passing game. You're definitely starting him on Ross St. Brown, and you can view Jamison Williams as a boom-bust number three wide receiver. Okay, so on one of my fantasy teams, I have Sam Laporta and George Kittle. So obviously, I'm in a bit of a pickle uh, this week. Kittle is not out. He's listed as questionable with the hamstring. Earlier in the week, he said he wasn't necessarily worried about it, but Heath, are you worried about it in terms of Kittle's production this week? 
No, no. I, I think, I mean, it makes sense to keep an eye on it, maybe have a backup plan, but all indications that we have, George Kittle's been on the injury report more often than he's not so far this season. It's just kind of where he's at at this stage in his career. We're expecting him to play. As you can see here from the consensus rankings, we're expecting him to play very well. He's been arguably the best tight end in football and fantasy football this season. And unless something surprising comes out on Sunday, we're expecting that to continue in week 11. I've got my fingers crossed that nothing uh, so surprising comes out and he is a full go. Uh, guys who aren't full goes are in Buffalo. They're having another week where this wide receiver room is very thin. Dalton Kincaid is out. Keon Coleman remains out. Amari Cooper is questionable. They're taking on the Chiefs on CBS. Uh, Heath, what are you doing with this Buffalo team? Because they, they still seem to win despite the fact that they've got issues here. Yeah, so we're going to keep starting Josh Allen, but it is a little bit dicey here. Uh, the, the only pass catcher I actually feel good about starting is Khalil Shakir, who has just caught everything over the last two years, has a chance at double-digit targets in this one, and the Chiefs are one of the most difficult teams in the NFL to run against, so I would expect the pass volume to be good as well. I think you can look at Shakir as a number two wide receiver. I'm much more cautious with Amari Cooper. I know that he says that he's going to play in this game um we, we hope so i don't know that you can trust him in your fantasy lineup though he's been one of the worst receivers in the nfl when it comes to actually catching the football and probably because he's been dealing with a wrist injury for a good portion of the season now he's talking about playing this game with a soft cast on his hand that is not something that i want my wide receiver to be dealing with so i'd like to stay away from amari cooper if i can the one that's really interesting and is, is a guy like dawson knox and I, I would start him over someone like brock wright I am, I think, the lowest on Knox because he's never really been a high target tight end, and we haven't seen a lot of production from Dalton Kincaid in this offense anyway. You're Again, like Wright, you're probably going to need a touchdown. It's just that Knox has that prior relationship with Josh Allen, so he's maybe more likely to score a touchdown than Wright is. Still, I, I, I think you can do better. I would prefer still to start a, a Will Disley over a Dawson Knox this week. All right, you see the rankings there in terms of PPR. Our guys at FFT have Dawson Knox listed at 12. For the Chiefs, Juju Smith-Schuster had a good week. Running back Isaiah Pacheco is still not ready. So how are we viewing the Chiefs here? Because we've talked at length about how this has been a down year for Patrick Mahomes. But how are you viewing the Chiefs and their particular options fantasy-wise as they go into this big game against Buffalo? Well, Patrick Mahomes gets his fourth 2018 Infinity Stone. Now he has DeAndre Hopkins, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, Kareem Hunt, Juju Smith-Schuster. It's the greatest team 2018's ever seen. And so maybe we see a little bit better production from Patrick Mahomes. We're still <laughs> viewing him as a number two quarterback. We still think you can do better in terms of starting. It's been difficult to pass against the Bills this season, but they've not been so good against the run. So I do expect a, a pretty high volume game from Kareem Hunt, who's been over 21 touches in each of his last five games. We like Hunt as a number two running back. In terms of the pass catchers, obviously Travis Kelsey is a must start. We're viewing DeAndre Hopkins as a number three wide receiver. Pro excellent chance for him to get into the end zone. I'm gonna be really interested to watch between Hopkins and Juju like how many times the Chiefs have both of them on the field together and how they're functioning. Because when Hopkins was signed, he pretty much just moved right into that Juju Smith-Schuster role, maybe doing just a little bit more downfield, but doing a lot of the same stuff Rashi Rice was doing earlier in the year as well. Now that they're both there, I, I'm not so sure that we don't just see 60% of the snaps Hopkins is on the field and Juju's playing when he's not. We want to roster Juju Smith-Schuster right now, but we don't want to start him. Heath, at the beginning of the year, we were all excited with what we saw from Xavier Worthy. Uh, what are we doing with him? How are you guys viewing him at this point of the season in terms of how he fits into this Chiefs offense? The, the problem so far with Xavier Worthy, and we've seen this from Chiefs rookies in the past, he's not playing an actual real wide receiver role. When he's had success, it's one big play, sometimes on a running play. And so he's not succeeding in the way that we like to see receivers succeed. I don't think it's sustainable. I I don't want to start Xavier Worthy, but if you're in a pinch, and a lot of people are because we've had so many wide receiver injuries this season, he is the type of guy who can make your day in just one play. He's got the speed to, to beat the defense for a 50-yard touchdown, or he could score on a rushing play in the red zone. So if, if you're in a pinch, you need to throw him into a flex spot, throw him into a wide receiver three spot. You have hope there. There's just no floor. And I'm a little bit concerned that we get 
Hopkins and Juju on the field more than worthy. Yeah, sorry, I had to throw that in. That was my uh, Jacqueline D'Agostino move there. A guy who's on my fantasy team has been sitting on my bench. I needed to know uh, what to do with Xavier Worthy. All right, lastly, let's talk about Cincinnati wide receiver T. Higgins. He's uh, set to remove some of the receiving burden from Jamar Chase. He returns after a three-game absence here. Bengals face the Chargers on Sunday night football. Are you starting Higgins this week? I, I think you have to. Um, as much as cautious as he's been with the hamstring earlier in the year, now with the quad this year, I think we assume that when he plays, he's healthy. And what we saw earlier in the year, he wasn't just taking some of the burden off of Jamar Chase. He was leading this team in targets, had at least six targets in every game, and had a 29% target share in the five games he played. So both Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are top 15 wide receivers. Joe Burrow is a no doubt about it top five quarterback the only negative for anybody here is Mike Gesicki and he just completely disappears from the equation Gesicki has been a must start tight end when there is no T Higgins and when Higgins has been active Gesicki hasn't mattered at all I'm just hoping that he doesn't take away from Jamar Chase's output because I've got him in a couple of teams as well our fantasy expert Heath Cummins giving us some injury guidance and roster adjustments as we head into week 11 thanks Heath great stuff as always good to talk to you fantasy football today you can get more from Heath and the guys uh, their usual Friday show is up for your listening pleasure start sit from the NFC talking about CD lamb what to do with Juwan Jennings and Rico Dowdle download and follow wherever you get your podcasts or scan that QR code you can get that latest start sit NFC. See episode right now.